Hey guys, so Jason Matthew here from Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to the Biochem GM YouTube channel. Alright, so for these series of lectures, these are some of the textbooks that I'm using. They are in no particular order um, or preference, but I, I would encourage you all to look at these textbooks. If you are using a, a different textbook than what is here, please you know, send us a link, let us know what they are so we can improve and increase our, our library. All right, so these are the books. So we're doing glycolysis part two. So please, guys, if you haven't looked at glycolysis part one, go to the YouTube channel BiochemGem and get the um, the video there. You know, it's very important that you do this in a certain order. So so part one, you know, we looked at um, the enzyme catalyzed reactions. We looked at all ten reactions going from glucose to part to two molecules of pyruvate. And today we're going to be looking at part two, which will look at the fates of this pyruvate that you have made. And later on, we will do part three, which we're looking at other molecules besides glucose entering glycolysis. So today we're going to be looking at part two, the fates of pyruvate. All right, so we have already done this first part here in part one, where we looked at the 10 glycolytic reactions that converts glucose to two molecules of pyruvate. So now the question is, well, what happens to this pyruvate in the cell? Well, that depends on what kind of conditions you all are under. Under aerobic conditions, so when oxygen is present, the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA, which will then enter the, the TCA cycle. So this here, this one in the middle, is where you're under aerobic conditions all right so this one in the center here this is when oxygen is present all right so when oxygen is present pyruvate will be converted to acetyl-CoA which will then enter the TCA cycle I should also point out this here this fate of pyruvate is where most ATP is going to be produced all right now, under anaerobic conditions, when no oxygen is present, the pyruvate is converted to lactate. And this occurs um, when you have um, fermentation to lactate in vigorously contracting muscle, in erythrocytes, and in some other cells, and in some microorganisms. All right? And in this under one here, under hypoxic or anaerobic conditions, again, you have ethanol fermentation as what occurs in yeast all right so basically you have um, under two conditions under aerobic conditions where you have oxygen present the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA which enters the TCA cycle all right under anaerobic conditions you can either get lactate or you can get ethanol we'll get more details in the subsequent slides so let's look at the first feat, and this is when oxygen is present in the cell. In other words, under aerobic conditions, the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA, and this acetyl-CoA could then enter the TCA cycle. This is an oxidative decarboxylation reaction, and the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction is called pyruvate dehydrogenase. And I want you all to see that this the delta G or the change in free energy is very negative so this reaction goes in one direction only these are the cofactors that um, pyruvate dehydrogenase or PDH uses all right so this is the first fate of pyruvate and this is when oxygen is present the pyruvate will be converted to the acetyl -CoA. we refer to this as the link reaction because it links pyruvate to the TCA cycle all right now the other two um, fates of pyruvate could could fall under the term fermentation now fermentation is a general term for such processes which extract energy but do not consume oxygen or change the concentrations of NAD plus or NADH all right, fermentation was discovered by Louis Pasteur, a very famous scientist. I'm sure everyone 
who is listening to me right now know who Louis Pasteur is or have heard, at least heard of the name Louis Pasteur. Right? And he described fermentation as a life without air. Now, whether or not we know it was fermentation, we have experienced fermentation in our everyday lives, such as in beer brewing, wine making, baking, the, the taste of sour milk, all right? Uh, the characteristic taste and fragrance of sauerkraut, that's, that's basically fermented cabbage. And then, you know, producing biofuels, all right? So fermentation is, is all around us, whether we know it or not. So let's look at the second fate of pyruvate. And this will now be under anaerobic condition, meaning oxygen is not available. All right. And this will occur like in the erythrocyte. All right. The erythrocyte is a mature red blood cell. And the erythrocyte depends solely on glycolysis to get its energy. All right. And the, the pyruvate that is formed from the glycolytic reactions in the erythrocyte is then converted to lactate. Now you might ask yourself, well, isn't the, the erythrocyte full of hemoglobin? And isn't hemoglobin the, um, carry, ha, contain oxygen? So how come you're saying it's under anaerobic conditions? Well, the thing is, yes, oxygen is present. But what the erythrocyte doesn't have is mitochondria. Because I should have also said that the link reaction that we saw before, all right, that occurs if mitochondria is present. So although the erythrocyte might have oxygen present, it doesn't contain any organelles, and in specifically mitochondria. Therefore, the erythrocyte cannot convert pyruvate to acetoacoate. The erythrocyte converts pyruvate to lactate. And it uses this enzyme here called lactate dehydrogenase. All right. So lactate dehydrogenase will convert pyruvate to lactate. All right. Now, what is the purpose of converting pyruvate to lactate, or in any fermentation process? And we need to go back to what's happening in glycolysis. Now, if you looked at glycolysis part one you will see that we looked at the payoff phase and this 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 reaction in particular is what we are concerned about when we look at the fates of pyruvate all right where you have the glycerol i3 phosphate is being converted to 1 3 bpg now you see this this here this is what this is what is of most importance for us at this moment 2NAD plus is being converted to NADH. So for the, for the reaction that is catalyzed by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, it requires two for, for two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to be converted to two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, 2NAD plus has to be converted to NADH. Now here's the thing. In this cell, there's a limited amount of NAD plus that is present. So in other words, for glycolysis to continue, you need to be making more NAD+. And that is particularly important for the red blood cell, the erythrocyte, because it is depending, the erythrocyte is depending on glyco glycolysis only to produce its ATP. So it means that if the NAD+, is completely used up, glycolysis stops. So what the, what the erythrocyte has done is to convert the pyruvate to lactate and it, the the whole um, purpose, the sole purpose of fermentation is so that it can regenerate the NAD+. Because if you go back to the reaction here, you see what's happening. This here, this is the most important thing here. The reason why you have the pyruvate being converted to lactate is because we want to regenerate NAD plus that is extremely extremely important especially for the erythrocyte that depends solely on glycolysis for its ATP all right so because it regenerates the NAD plus glycolysis can continue so you see in this slide here it is a little summary of what we just said glucose is converted 
to two molecules of pyruvate that that took place in glycolysis so in glycolysis glucose converts two molecules of pyruvate now the 2 NAD plus would have been converted to 2 NADH as I said there's limited amounts of NAD plus so this NADH has to be to be converted back to NAD plus and always the NAD plus has to be regenerated and the way the, the, the erythrocyte does that is by converting its two molecules of pyruvate to two molecules of lactate. So the NADH is, re, is reconverted to NAD+. Now there is no net gain. The, the two NADH that was formed is now converted to two NAD+. So that's what we say about fermentation. Right? There is no, there's no net gain of NAD+, or NADH. Right? And again, to point out, when you are converting pyruvate to lactate, no ATP is generated, right? All the ATP is coming from the glycolytic reactions, all right? So this reaction here, pyruvate to lactate gives no ATP. All the ATP that the erythrocyte gets is from glucose to pyruvate. In other words, it gets two ATP molecules from every glucose molecule that enters glycolysis. So that's for the erythrocyte. Lactate also is also produced um, in the muscle, but it's under specific conditions. Normally, if there's enough oxygen reaching the muscle cells, well, then the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA, which enters the TCA cycle. But under conditions of vigorous exercise, what will be happening there? Well, well let's think about it. When you are, let's say you're running, all right, you're sprinting. You, what happens after a while you start, you start panting you know you, what the body is basically doing is trying to get enough as, as much oxygen into the body as possible but the problem here is, is that not enough oxygen is reaching the muscle cells and at that point for the muscle to, to continue contracting it converts its pyruvate into lactate but that could only go on for a short while because what happens is that the the lactate as it builds up all right it's, it's 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 a poison basically for the body it's acidic and um what happens is that it it it's responsible for the muscle cramps and muscle pains when the lactic acid or the lactate builds up in the muscle all right so they say here the best condition at least can sprint at top speed for about a minute by um the muscle cells converting pyruvate to lactate and allowing glycolysis to continue there's a very interesting and cool cycle that we're going to be looking at um, later on called the quarry cycle so if you want to as this is fresh in your head I would recommend that you um, look at the quarry cycle we're going to come to it eventually but please go ahead and look at it it's C-O-R-I quarry cycle so you can check it out now the final fate of pyruvate is ethanol fermentation and this occurs like for instance in yeast all right so yeast now will have two enzymes all right because that is it is a two-step reaction you need two enzymes pyruvate decarboxylase and alcohol dehydrogenase there's a two-step first the pyruvate is converted to acetyl aldehyde using pyruvate decarboxylase and remember if you see the word decarboxylase that enzyme it's um, removing carbon carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. It's a decarboxylation reaction. So pyruvate decarboxylase. Now pyruvate decarboxylase needs TPP. Alright? Thiamine pyrophosphate. It needs TPP as a cofactor for this enzyme to work. And that's very important. Now if you're paying attention to the slides before, you'll see that another enzyme that we just looked at also uses TPP as a cofactor. Think you remember it? If not, go back and check it out. All right. So the pyruvate is first converted to acetaldehyde, and then this acetaldehyde is converted to ethanol. It is at this step the alcohol dehydrogenase is converted acetaldehyde to ethanol, where the NADH is converted to NAD+. All right. And this is for one molecule. So for two molecules of pyruvate, going to two molecules of of ethanol it will be 2 NADH going to 2 NAD plus alright so there's no net gain or loss of NAD plus it's regenerated 
and that's the purpose of ethanol fermentation. It is to regenerate the NAD plus so that glycolysis could continue. All right, so again, thiamine pyrophosphate, TPP, is a cofactor for, I say, three enzymes that we're going to be coming across in our studies. And that's two of them we saw today, which is pyruvate decarboxylase, pyruvate dehydrogenase, or PDH. And when we do the pentose phosphate part, we're going to see this, this other enzyme called transketolase. So this could be a nice multiple choice for you all, right? So which enzymes use TPP, pyruvate decarboxylase, PDH, and transketolase. So let's summarize. Pyruvate has three fates. And what happens to the pyruvate depends on whether oxygen is present or not. Under aerobic conditions, the pyruvate will, will um, be converted to acetyl-CoA which enters the TCA cycle. The enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is called PDH or pyruvate dehydrogenase. If oxygen is not present under anaerobic conditions, then you have lactate fermentation. So the pyruvate is converted to lactate and the enzyme that catalyzes that reaction is called lactate dehydrogenase. And finally, you could have ethanol fermentation and two enzymes are involved in this. One is called pyruvate decarboxylase and the other is called alcohol dehydrogenase. So guys, I hope this was informative. You know, as usual, like the videos. You know, please hit that like button on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, become a biochemian, and we love to hear from you all. Give us your feedback. And I mean, you know, you know, you know, the, you know the thing. I must thank you all for giving us your support, keeping the Biochem Gem YouTube channel alive. Thanks, guys. More videos coming soon. Take care.